Wednesday, the future of travel and workplace is taking shape. So first up, we're going to dive deeper into how Facebook is transforming the office into a virtual reality. A lot of people still buzzing over this one. Our tech expert, Greg Nibbler, joining us live to tell us more. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting time right now in tech. We've got a bunch of hardware announcements that are coming out in the next couple of weeks, but a lot of people talking about future technology. And this is Facebook with their version of how they believe the future of workplace interaction is gonna go. And it's through something called the metaverse, which is their idea of this kind of a, a cross between virtual reality and actual workplace environments. So the idea is through this thing called Horizon Workrooms, where you could scan your desktop in, you'd have a virtual avatar, and then you interact with up to 16 other people in this virtual workplace environment. You can actually share stuff from the computer right into it. They've got different kind of uh, uh, different things that you can like write on and interact with people directly. They've got spatial audio. So when you're in this VR environment, it actually sounds like somebody's talking from across the room and they think this is how things are gonna go here in the near future. And they put this out as a beta right now. If you have an Oculus Quest headset, you could actually try it out. And, and this is their version of where they think eventually everything's gonna be. They think we're gonna be interacting this idea of a virtual world a whole lot more. It's kind of like if you've seen Ready Player One, it's along those lines, like the oh. Oasis, like that's where yeah. they see it going. I, I don't know. I don't know, uh, that's I mean, really interesting. My first thought was I could just see myself trying to grab my cup of coffee or something and spilling it all over my actual keyboard because I've got this virtual <laughs> headset on. <laughs> Yeah, it, it could be a little clunky if you're trying to do it at home. I'm not sure how it would work. Yeah, I think it'll definitely take a learning curve. I feel like to, to get used to that because you'll see your actual computer in the VR environment. So it'll be scanned in there, but you're touching it at the same time. So it's this combination of real life, but then VR. So I don't know how it's going to work out, but they're really investing heavy in it. And they really want this word metaverse to become part of the uh, part of the lexicon. So that's where I think you're going to see a lot of things from Facebook in the next couple of years as they try to push people more to that VR side of things. The metaverse, interesting. The metaverse. Okay, <laughs> we'll have to see uh, how it rolls out. Well, right now, you know, people who do commute for work, uh, sometimes you're taking the train or you're getting on a plane. Uh, Virgin Hyperloop could change all that. This is really interesting. Yeah, I love this idea of a Hyperloop. So I guess to explain what that is for everybody. So the Hyperloop is this idea of transportation where you have essentially giant metal tubes. And within that, you have a pod. Now within the tube, you take out all the air. It's pretty much vacuum sealed. And then it's magnetic levitation on top of that. So what that really means is there's no resistance and you can fire these tubes that people would be in at really high speeds, like up to like 670 miles per hour. And the idea would be to put these along major corridors of transportation. You know, the US, they talked about one from San Francisco to LA, where you could get from one city to the other in like 35 minutes, wow. or from Portland to Seattle in 15 minutes. Oh my I mean, just right, that concept's just so weird. And this video they put out, it gives just another idea of what the passenger experience would be like, because you wouldn't realize you're moving that fast, you wouldn't actually feel it because you're in this vacuum tube, but they have these pods with up, I think it was like 16 people, something like that in, in each one of these pods. And then they can fire you off to pretty much wherever you want to go. It's, it's still something that's a few decades out. I feel like I don't think we're going to be getting this right away, but there's companies really investing on this tech and, and testing it out. They've got a test track in California right now where they're running these things back and forth, not quite to those speeds, but still you know, working on the basic technology for it. And they think that this is eventually going to be an economical way to get people around in like real mass transit situations. It's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, the infrastructure alone, I think puts it, you know, pretty pretty far down the road in terms of when we would actually be able to use these. But anyone who sat on I-5 going back and forth from Portland to Seattle right? you know, over the weekend probably would sign up for a 15 minute pod, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd definitely be on board with that. Absolutely. Um, okay, and Google Photos is doing something kind of cool now with AI. Tell me about that. Yeah, I thought this was kind of cool. It's like something you see in a sci-fi movie where they're always like, zoom in, you know, and they zoom in on this really pixelated picture and they get this really clear <laughs> image. But that's kind of what Google's working on. So it's that, that actual idea is taking um, really old pictures or really pixelated, like tiny little avatars, maybe or something that you had from a phone like 10 years ago where it's now such poor quality and then expanding it and making it uh, high resolution. And they're using AI to do that. So they've been testing this out where they, essentially the AI scans this photo and then breaks it down and then rebuilds it into a higher 
uh, quality image. And they've had some really good results with it. So this is from something called Google Brain, which is where they test out all of these technologies. And then occasionally they'll tell the public what it is that they've discovered or what they're working on. And they've had a lot of success with this. So you think about you know, the applications, it could be old photos like that, or maybe even medical scans to be able to do it. And, and they say that you know, the way that the AI works, it actually is pretty photorealistic. It's almost exactly like it would have looked if you had had a high resolution image. Wow. It's kind of crazy to think where that's going to go, you know, what yeah. we're going to be able to do with that. I mean, yeah, it's cool to see it with some of these like, you know, blurry faces or older photos, but then even to be able to get, you know, information out of the background of an image or to be able to yeah. read, read words or different things like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. So just kind of interesting to see where the future of tech is going. Yeah, the future is here. All right. Thanks <laughs> as always, Greg. Always good to chat with you. You too. And of course, you can stay up to date on all things tech. Just follow Greg on Twitter. He's at Greg Nibbler.